Well, hi everyone, this is Bob the Science Guy. Today we're going to continue to work through the Texas Slide Rule Championship Test, questions 16 through 20. But we're going to have a little twist. Now you'll notice that there's no virtual slide rule on the top of the screen this time. This is the Picket N3 that we have been using throughout the course so far. But we're not going to use it today. I want to work on slide rule proficiency. So we're going to use a completely different slide rule today. Uh, and that is this Aristo Studio. 968. Now the reason that I'm choosing this particular one is that the scale setup is very different. And what I want you to do is as we work through these problems, I want you to think about the scales that you want to use. And I want to demonstrate a couple of neat things about the slide rule. Now first let's go over some of the differences between the Arista Studio slide rule and the Picket N3. Well one obvious difference is that the Picket N3 is made out of aluminum. It's just basically a little sheet of thin aluminum with an awful lot of scales and photo printing on it. It's a good slide rule and I like it because it's lightweight, it's thin, and, it, and when I go to school I can just slip it right in this little pocket on my note-taking software. Now the Arista Studio on the other hand is considerably thicker. It's made out of plastic. It's got a larger cursor and it has some different scales on it. Now one thing you'll notice on the picket is that the trig scales are on the slide whereas on the Arista Studio the trig scales are on the body of the slide rule and it also has this additional scale called a P or a Pythagorean scale. Now another thing that you'll notice is that while we have the folded scales and the CD scale and the CI and the CIF scales on this side the A scale, the B scale, the K scale, and the L scale and all of the log log scales are on the other side. Whereas with the picket, we have our trig scales, we have a C and a D, we have an A, B, and a K all on the same side, and a CI, and a DI for that matter. And on the back, we have folded scales. So it's a little different setup. Well, let's go ahead and start hitting the problems. Now, as usual, the problems we're working on will be down in the left lower corner. And of course, you can see my notes in the slide rule right here. All right, let's have a look at this first one. Now the first problem is 917 squared times the square root of 370 over the square root of 114 times 321 squared. Now, one thing that we should look at is that we have a mix of functions here. We have square roots and we have squares. Let's rewrite this in a way that we can perhaps solve it a little bit better. I'm going to go ahead and attack these first. Now the reason that I'm grouping these together is that the square roots are solved on the C and D scale. The squares can be attacked in two different ways. We can sit down and we can make this 917 times 917 over 321 times 321. Or we can address this on the AB scales and then move it down to the CD scales because this is going to be addressed on the CD scales. So let's go ahead and have a look and see how I'm going to do that. Well the first thing that I want to do is I want to identify the side of the slide rule that has the A and the B scales on it because this is the side that I'm going to use. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to come out here on the C scale to 917 which is going to be about right there and then we're simply going to divide that by 321 and there we go. So where's our answer going to be? Is it going to be here? No. It's going to be up here. Now what we have to do now is we have to get the answer from up here down to the C and D scale where we're going to work on it. So how are we going to do that? Well, we're going to look here on the D scale because this is x squared and that is x. So in order to get x to become x squared, we have to multiply it by itself. And the easiest way to do that is going to be to turn the slide rule over. Notice that the numbers are all the same. We're going to identify where that one is, and it appears to be at 286. And then we're going to use the CI scale and put 286 on the CI scale over the 286 on the D scale. So that'll be right out here. Here's 280. 286 and if we flip it back over we see we're just over 8 on the A scale and now we have transferred that out here to the D scale. Now the next part of the problem is actually pretty straightforward. 
since our index is already here, the next logical thing that we should do is probably do a multiplication. And what do we need to multiply? We need to multiply the square root of 370. Well, where is that going to be? That's going to be on the left side of the A scale. So we'll come out here to 370 and read straight down, and there's our answer. Next, we want to divide by the square root of 114. Once again, we'll use the 114 here out on the B scale. And 114, that, there's 114 right there. Okay? So, here's our new answer. And if we read down, we've got 1.47. Now that's the correct answer, but what magnitude is it? So, we're going to have 1.47 times 10 to the 1. And that is the correct answer. Okay, let's do this a little bit more organized. So we're going to have 2.17 times 10 to the 2 times 9 times 9 times 10. That's 10 to the 2. 10 to the 2 times 10 to the 2 is 10 to the 4. And that's going to be 1.14 times 10 to the 2. And down here, this is going to be, it's greater than, when we shift this over, we have 8. And that's greater than 4, but less than 9. So it's going to be 2-something. So we're just going to put down 2. And then since we had to shift over 1, we have to shift back 1. So that's going to be 2.0 times 10 to the 1. So let's go ahead and get a quick one here. That's about 160. Now because this was 80, we have to go ahead and revert this to scientific notation. And that means that we're going to have to shift the decimal. And we're going to have to add 1 to the 10 to the 3. So let's go ahead and do this one real quick. Okay, so how are we going to attack this? Well, the first thing is we're going to put our cursor on 217 and divide it by 114. So let's go ahead and start off with that. That's pretty straightforward. There's 216 and halfway to 218 would be 217. Then we're going to divide it by 1.14. Now next we want to multiply it by 9. Well, that's going to be way out here on the end of the slide. So let's flip this over to where our folded scales are. We'll go ahead and put the index of the folded scale right here, and we'll multiply it by 9.1. Now what's next? We want to divide it by the square root of 814. Well, once again, we have to come back over to the other side, and we've got to find 814 on the AB scale, and then divide this number by whatever is the square root of 814. So we'll come back out here. So there's 810. And there's 814. So what do we have now? It's a little bit over 6, right there. Now what do we do next? We multiply it by 9.1, and that's pretty straightforward. We can come right over here to 9.1, and let's see what we have. Looks like it's about 5.52, and that's times 10 to the 4, and that is the correct answer. Now something that I want to stress here is even though we're using an unfamiliar slide rule, we know the different types of scales that are on that slide rule, and we are choosing the scales that we use deliberately to be most efficient with the operation that we're doing. Now, the other thing that we have to remember, when you put the hairline on a number on one side, if you flip it over, it's on the same spot. It's on the same number, at least on the C and the D scale. So let's go ahead and hit that next problem. Okay, so let's have a look at this next problem. It's a little bit more challenging because we have a number that's less than zero. So we're going to have 2.16 times 10 to the negative 2 squared times the square root of 306, and that's all going to be over 940, 9.4 times 10 to the 2. So what do we have here? This is going to be about 4 times 10 to the negative 4. And this number right here, that's going to be the square root of 3 times 10, because we had to move over 2, and then we're going to have to move it back 1. So that's going to be about 10. So that's going to be 10 to the minus 4 is what we're going to get. So let's go ahead and solve it. Let's just go 216, which is right here. We're going to divide it by 940, which is going to be right here. Now we're going to come out here, and we're going to multiply it again by 216. That'll be the other half here. And then what's going to happen? Then we're going to go ahead and multiply it by the square root of 306. And it'll be on the B scale. It'll be right here. So what do we have? We have 8 
8.7. So we have 8 point, let's go 6, 9 times 10 to the negative 4. Let's see what the answer is. It was actually 8.68, but that's within, that's within the acceptable margin of error on a slide rule. So we're in pretty good shape so far. Okay, let's look at this next one. I'm just going to write it out in scientific notation. You can see the original form up there on the screen. So what do we have here? We have 4 plus 1 is 5, minus 2 is 3, minus a minus 1 is 4. So it's going to be about 10 to the 4. And what's this going to be? It's going to be about 9 times 2 is 18. It'd be 18 divided by 24. So actually that's going to be a fraction. So we've got to subtract 1 here. So this is about 3 over 4, or it's going to be about 7.5 times 10 to the 3. So let's go ahead and see what we have here. All right, so let's go ahead and hit this problem. Just to confirm, we have 317 squared times the square root of 613 divided by 692 times 0 0.402. So we're going to go ahead and let's break this up to 3.17 times 3.17 to get rid of that square. So we'll start off here at 3.17. 3.17 will be right there, and then we're going to divide by 6.92. Okay, then we're going to multiply by 317. Then we're going to divide by 402. So here's the 402. We're doing this all on the C scale right now. And then we're going to multiply this by the square root of 613. Well, where is that going to be? It's over here, so we're not going to be able to get it. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to switch out the index. So what we'll do is we'll come over here to the index with our hairline and mark it, and then we'll flip the index and use the other index right there. Then we'll come out here to 613, which is going to be about right there. Looks like it's going to be about 893. So 8.93, which is pretty close to our estimate. So 8.93 times 10 to the third. We'll check the answer real quick, and that is correct. All right, now this next one's kind of interesting because we have a couple of terms here. We've got 3 pi, and then we've got a square on top, and then we have a square root on the bottom. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. So you may recall when we looked at the folding scales earlier, but if you look at the index on the C and the D scale and look straight up on the folding scales, that's pi. So any number that's on the CD scale is automatically multiplied by pi up on the folded scale. So if we come out here to 3, 3 pi will be right up here on the folded scales. Now, the index on the C folded scale is keyed to the index on the C scale. So if we put the index directly under the, va the value of 3 pi on df, it's immediately transferred over here to d. That's pretty slick, isn't it? Now, what's next? Well, now we want to divide by the square root of 511. So, let's flip it back over until we get to the a scale and the b scale. Bring up 511, and we have our answer, which is down here. This is the intermediate answer, by the way. Now what do we do? We multiply this by 121. Well, there's 121. Now what do we do? We divide this by 811. Now there's a couple of ways we can do it. We can bring the slide all the way back or we can flip it over and we can bring the index of the CI scale up to it. We're going to multiply it by 1 over 88. That's pretty cool, huh? So we want to multiply this by 121, so we'll just pop that right over to the index and come out here to 121. It's looking like 60... It looks like 6.91. 6.91. Let's go see where we are. And that's not too far from what we estimated. And we came out with 6.91. And that would be times 10 to the 1. And that is correct. They actually have it listed as 6.92 times 10 to the 1, but we're close enough. So in this installment of the Texas Slide Rule Championship, we basically did a lot of combined operations with squares and square roots. We also worked a little bit on scale proficiency and fluency. And next time, things are going to get really spicy when we start bringing in cubes and cube roots. So this is Bob the Science Guy. Follow me for more Slide Rule action. I'll see you again soon.